What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. To another episode. To another episode. Here at the center. Here at the center of Stingray Biology. Very good. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. What should I say, Kim? All right, guys, we got a new episode for you today. Come on, we had uh, a Bosmani give birth out of this tank. It was that female in that corner. Can they Can they see? Let's get a little bit closer here so they can see it. All right. She only gave birth to two. I already pulled the pups out earlier this morning because I figured it wasn't enough content to make a video, but it's right up there. Why don't you get up there and show everybody? So they're looking pretty good. I'm very happy with the quality. Um, I moved the, the pups that were in there out and it was that one right there, the one with the short tail. If you guys remember that one, it's grown pretty nicely. This is one of my favorites actually. This one right here, also without a tail. The really cool thing is it's like it's got like this pointy little stub over there, which actually makes it look pretty cool. That's that, that's a quick update. Um, I need to move some big rays around here today. So what this episode is gonna be about is managing aggression among your rays. And, and this requires you to like really know your rays, really pay attention, know what's going on, especially like when you're feeding the fish, know who's eating, who's not eating, who's stressed out, who's scared, who's hiding in the corner. So you really have to kind of know everything that's going on, right? So what I discovered here was I have, or well, I had a female that was getting all chewed up and I had already separated it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, let's get a little bit closer here. And you can see all that damage on the back. That's healing up already. And then, you know, that missing part right there. So the males, obviously, were getting a little bit frisky and wanting to mate with her. And all that happened in this tank over here. Um, apparently, after putting in the new coating, the tank's nice and clean, I'm getting a lot of action out of this tank. But, 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 they're being aggressive towards each other. The male is nonstop going after the females to the point where they're hurting the females and stressing the females. So now, since moving that female out, now I notice the males are doing the same thing to another female. I'm gonna show you right there. The exact same spot, okay? Taking off the skin off the back edge of the disc near the two paddles. And this fish is pregnant. I can see the hump. Uh, you guys probably can't tell from this angle, but it's there. And I don't want her to be any more stressed. Normally, you know, I, I see her up against the wall. And then when I feed, she comes down to eat. She eats a little bit, and then she goes back to the wall. Let's see where she's going now. Hey, Daddy. Yes, babe? Uh, maybe one time, there's some stingrays that are long, big, and medium, and small. Yes, yes. Yeah, big that's babies are small, medium, big. Okay. Stingrays so are you like see that right there, look at that. She goes back to the corner, and now you see the male kind of hovering around her. Um, I believe that is the male that is aggressive. I really have two choices right now. I can separate the female or separate the male. But the thing is, I have another female here. And what I've noticed happen is, when I separated that first female, I thought, okay, I fixed my problem. But now, he's going after the next best thing. So he's going after that one. Now I'm thinking, if I pull that female out, they might now go after the third female, which right now is untouched. So it's almost like they have a, a, a order or a preference Right? So if I keep eliminating the options, they're going to the next best thing. Um, so I'm actually thinking what I wanna do is I wanna pull out the males and leave the females in there, especially since that female is pregnant. I really don't wanna net her, I don't wanna tub her, I don't wanna stress her out. So I think that's the move I'm gonna do. Now, um, there are two males in here, okay? Now I'm wondering, if I take out just the one aggressive male, Will the other male become aggressive, like step up? 
you know, now that I took out the alpha male, will this guy step up and become the new alpha? I don't know. I have a choice to make again. Maybe you should remove both females. You mean both males? Yeah, both males. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Exactly, Kim. I'm thinking maybe to be safe, I remove both of the males so that the females are untouched. I just gotta make sure I have the space. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two females, okay? I'm gonna put these two back into the tank so that they have more room and then bring those two males and put it in here. So Kim, you made the right decision. And by the way, everybody, it was Kim's birthday yesterday. She is how old now? Eight? Eight. You're eight years old. Okay. So you're a big girl now. And, and also, if you if you put those females inside here, it's going to be a girls club. It's going to be a girls club. And over there, it's going to be a boys club. <laughs> yeah, but how come the girls club is bigger than the boys club? It's because it's more larger with more space to eat. Okay. All right. So, since you seem to be like running this video today, what should I move first? Should I move the females should... into here or move the males into there? What should I do first? Okay. I need like the boys into there. Yes, that is exactly correct. Because if I take the boys first, there's no room in that cage for everybody. So I gotta take all the big girls yeah. out first. Yeah, they'll be mixed up all together and you'll be like, which one's the male? Which one's the male? Well, I know which one it is, but we just gotta make sure they have enough room, right? Yeah, I'm kinda confused about males. You're kinda confused about males? Well, I'll explain to you which one is a male. Oh, look at that. See, I just noticed this now. You see that male over there on the edge of the disc? Oh, he yeah. got a chunk missing there. So, I gotta figure out who did that. Now typically, you don't see that kind of damage on a male. You only see that kind of damage on a female. Um, so maybe the other male is, you know, likes to swing both ways. Who knows? Well, maybe. Or, well, maybe. or maybe, you know, he's getting jealous and wants to beat up on the competition. Who knows, but now I gotta keep an eye on that. Okay, hang on one second, let me finish here. I need to keep an eye on that, okay? So that's why it's very critical to always observe your race and know what's going on. Try to be a few steps ahead and 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 catch the problem early, you know? Because to me, you know, I always say prevention is, is, is the best cure, right? So we don't want to wait until that fish is not doing well. See, he's still active, swimming around, which is a great sign, look at that. He's still swimming all over. So that means the injury is not bothering him so much or not stressing him so much. We're still good there, but I will be keeping an eye on that. But for now, we gotta take care of that pregnant female. What is it? And also, wait, maybe a female was in there and then bit him and then just ran off and, and then ran off because you were thinking you was a yellow cat. You gotta face the camera. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. you gotta face the camera. Yeah, like, um, I was thinking that, that, like, female was doing a punch competition who can bite off their first arm on the male first. Okay. okay. Why, is, why is she being a bully to him? She's a mean. She's a mean. Yeah, it's because that she wants to get revenge back what she did to her okay. other friend that right. in the other tank. All okay. right. I don't mean to cut you off, Kim, but I need to move these okay, fish now. Okay, we're gonna okay. move the fish. You're so let me grab work. this one female first. Okay. If you guys remember before, these two females um, gave birth uh, in this cage, and then I took the big females and I put it in there and then uh, the males kind of got too aggressive. So now it's kind of like a musical chairs game. All right, watch out, you're gonna get wet. So that wasn't too bad. So this is the bigger one. This girl has been moved back and forth a few times already. Back, baby. And back. The, the, the one thing that I'm going to also pay attention for after I move them over the next couple of days is to make sure that they're still eating well, right? Sometimes a change of environment can affect their appetite. So we got to, yeah, we got to uh, make sure that's on point. All right, she's in. There we go. So, here we go. This is a big girl. Watch out, Ari. She's gonna splash. You don't wanna get wet. Oh my goodness, it's heavy. Ugh. Ow! Okay. Alright. 
That's two. All right, Kim. Oh, what are you doing over there? <laughs> All right, so part one is done, Kim. So now we're gonna move the males, okay? What we got? One male right here in the corner. The males seem to be more freaked out than the, than the females. All right, that's because they know I'm separating them. No more girlfriends for you, okay? Because you're too aggressive with the girls. So, but I can't reach them. big females over there will not be too stressed out and they will eat tomorrow because of the pregnant female I don't want them to go off feeding so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that the males will be fine in here they got plenty of space and uh, once that female gives birth I will probably choose one of these males to throw back in there so we can get the immediate mating and lastly we will definitely be keeping an eye on the injury and uh, the behavior of that male to see if we need to do anything. So, once again, just to recap on this episode, managing the aggressions among your rays, you know, sometimes can be difficult if you don't have the space. You know, I have a big facility, I have all these multiple tanks, and I have these cages, right? So it allows me to move things around. One thing that you guys at home should keep in mind, you should be prepared for situations like this. Maybe have a tank divider ready, you know, just in case something like this happens, it's always best to be prepared. And if nothing happens, ideally, that is the best case scenario. But if something does happen, at least you have it and you're ready. You're not scrambling, running to Home Depot, running to here and there, looking and cutting to get it. You have it all ready, just so that if something does happen, you can act immediately and it will be better for your raise, less stress on them and less stress on you as well. Okay, guys. Thank you again for watching. I hope you guys uh, were able to learn something from this episode. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Help me take my channel to the next level, all right? I want to try to hit 50,000 subscribers, and then from there, the next goal would be 100,000. We'll take little steps at a time, and hopefully maybe one day I can be a million subscribers, right? But that can only be done with your help. And don't forget, hit that thumbs up. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And of course, comments. I would love to hear your comments, all right? So thank you guys again, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.